Hi everyone, this is Matt from DrawingTutorialsOnline.com and this is podcast number 13. In this podcast, I just want to take you step by step by step um, drawing an arm uh, from scratch, starting with a cylinder and thinking about a bunch of different techniques. I'm trying to draw an arm that I just drew in a deltoid um, anatomy lesson that I taught to the members of uh, DrawingTutorialsOnline.com. So let's get into it. Hi everyone, this is Matt from Drawing Tutorials Online and this is podcast number 13. And um, in this podcast I'm going to do a drawing out of my imagination uh, for you of an arm starting with form and then just taking it to as much as I can take it in a short video podcast. But this is a drawing that I, I just completed and I'm not going to work on this drawing. I know some of you guys aren't into when I work on a drawing where I started it and then I work on it, and especially in these short videos. So I won't do that for you. Um, but I just want to share with you, this is an example of a drawing that, that I did for anatom an anatomy lesson. It's anatomy lesson number 14, and it is of uh, the deltoid muscle. So I spoke about the deltoid muscle, its function, what it attaches to, how you can utilize your knowledge of the deltoid uh, muscle to make your drawings look a little bit more. More realistic. So um, this is something that I, I just completed. Now, what is going in my on in my mind when I'm starting to render all this stuff out? I'd love to show you the photograph, but I really don't want to show you the photograph because it's just full frontal nudity. Um, so let me put that drawing aside and let me just kind of get to a brand new drawing for you. So let's start with the basics now of drawing, and the basics is. Form, okay. I don't want to press down too hard on this because I'm going to be layering stuff on top of it. So we have our form right there. Our form is a cylinder. And I was just talking about the deltoid. So we spoke about the deltoid and our deltoid goes on top of that form. Now this form of the cylinder eventually what we're going to do with it is it's going to represent your arm. Okay, um, Bear with me in the beginning moments of this podcast because I know that this is very light. Uh, but I'll press down hard as I go. So basically we have our deltoid now and it wraps around. It's very cylindrical. Our deltoid is a, is a very round muscle and uh, it's a very cylindrical muscle. So we'll give ourselves some sheet lines to show the roundness of it. Our deltoid attaches to two bones. Um, your scapula, this is your acromion, and it also attaches to your clavicle, okay? I'm not going to go too crazy with the anatomy tutorial on this podcast. So that is our form. That is some anatomy. So now what we can do is we can expand on this. And basically, if you know the form of the cylinder, our next thing is advanced form. And in my uh, neck of the woods we call advanced form we're not too fancy and we don't think that we're all that good and all that great but we kind of use these these funny words and our, our advanced form is going to be called the peanut shape so this is our peanut shape that would take the place of the cylinder cylinder is step number one that that is like caveman drawings the cylinder um, the peanut shape I don't know what these uh, errors are after the caveman, um, or maybe uh, the cylinders Cro-Magnon man and, and the peanut shape is a little bit more advanced. It's, it's the caveman, okay? So basically now we have our peanut shape, and I always say with the peanut shape to my students that you have a crunch in and a convex line. So now we're thinking about line with this upper arm. We have our shoulder, so now we can say, all right, here is our deltoid into our triceps. We just drew the triceps line right here. So now if we wanted to, we can kick in a little bit of anatomy. We'll throw in a little ulna bone right at the bottom. Is that on video? Yes, it's on video. Good, good, good. So let's just kind of keep going. Now we can throw in a little trapezius muscle. Let's go back now. And so we're going to make this a, a tad skinnier and we're going to bring this deltoid down a little bit more. Make this bicep area. Told you I'd press down harder. Um, so now you can actually see this. So now we have our bicep. Now with this deltoid, I'm thinking anatomy. 
Okay, on drawing tutorials online, we do have an anatomy section. The bottom of this deltoid is going to go right into this muscle called a brachialis. And this is our, our bicep region, very cylindrical. And then this is our triceps, back of the arm, going right to that ulna. So we could think of this part of the form. I don't want to ruin the drawing. I'm going to draw on top of it lightly. We can think of this part of the drawing as being a box. Okay, we're a box with the biceps, a little bit more boxy, 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 front plane, side plane, and then we have cylindrical ball shape almost. This is almost like a sphere right over here. Um, this whole top of the peanut shape. And then we have another cylinder, which is our trapezius muscle, which I'm not going to get into because it's off the camera. Okay, so now if we wanted to, we repeat and rinse. Okay, so repeat and rinse would be, I've spoken about this so many times to my students, our forearm, and that is going to be a box cylinder. Repeat and rinse. I just did the same thing that I did with the, with the upper arm. So I can give my lines to show the box. And um, Okay, so that is how I'm thinking when I'm drawing a body part. Uh, for my own drawings, I kind of pushed the, the anatomy a little bit. I really tried to outline the muscles and, and show the different parts of the muscles on the, on the tutorial. Um, kind of, and I, I, I outlined the bones a bitch, a, a, a bitch, there you go. <laughs> I, I outlined the bones a bitch much. They were a bitch to outline. I outlined the bones a bit much, okay? Um, so I was just really trying to show what's happening under the skin. So this would be a little bit more, when we come down to this breast, this would be a little bit more my style of drawing, a little bit softer, a little bit more realistic. As soon as you start to throw in outlines, things tend to get like a little bit more stylized. But you need line and, and you need tone and you want to combine the two. So basically this is more of like a tutorial drawing, more of like a line drawing, more of like a fun drawing, okay? So um, let, let's, let's talk about now how we would make it look like this, how, how we would take it to the next level. So let me put that drawing down once again. Uh, basically, we have to make a decision now. Uh, where is the light coming from? Okay, all this I'm trying to do out of my imagination. I'm pulling this from the tutorial that I did earlier today of the, the deltoid area into the bicep area. So now I'm trying to do it out of my imagination. And now out of your imagination, this is just easy. Let's just say that we could put a light source right here, okay? Um, our light source is zooming down, it's hitting this arm. So now a step on my website, I have a section on my website called begin here, step by step, okay? So one of the steps is the line that separates the light from the dark. So we're, we're just going to be really generic with this. We're going to put it on down. So now what I can do is I can shade and shade the same way. So I'm going to say this whole forearm now is going to be catching shadow because the upper arm is throwing a shadow on that other form. Okay, shade first on a diagonal. Diagonal is just a generic way to shade. You want to be careful when you shade on a diagonal because a lot of traditional teachers, and I guess I'm a traditional teacher, um, teach this diagonal way of shading because it's quick and easy. But the bad thing about it is it flattens out your form. These lines that I gave you originally really promote form. This diagonal tone flattens it. Okay. Now when we get up top over here, you have a choice. Right now we have a drawing against white paper, okay? You can leave it that way uh, or you can create atmosphere. So another step that I had on my website is this thing called reverse gradations. I won't get into it too in detail, but you can put a gradation against the light part of what you're drawing. Feather it away. Do it on the diagonal once again. So we're going to use a tone now to pop this light. Let's bring it all away again uh, against the trapezius. I'm using a Bristol paper, Strathmore, with 
you don't even have to, I don't even have to tell you what I use for those of you guys who watched me. I'm using Prismacolor Color Erase Pencil Black, colored pencil in essence, okay? Um, so now what I can do is, uh, I this is not necessarily what, what I, I could do this reverse gradation on this drawing. So I would do a tone here instead of doing that dark line to make this pop. So you have a choice. Depends on what you want to do. So you do your tone here. I don't want to do it on this drawing. Do your tone, bring it up to that line, keep this light, keep this light. So you have dark or middle tone to pop the light, light to pop the dark. I hope that makes sense. It's, it's kind of the reverse. These, I get into this stuff in detail on the site. And uh, basically when you are an artist and, and you're working on all these drawings, you should be thinking about at least 30 things rotating in your mind, drawing with purpose, um, thinking about the anatomy, thinking about the tone, thinking about the form, thinking about these techniques, line that separates light from the dark. You're not going to be drawing the techniques. Um, as a teacher talking to students and as a teacher talking to other teachers, I'm a real big believer in, in allowing the students to not love everything that I teach. Some of, my, some of the students that I have hate things that I teach. And I'm like, that's great. You know what you like and what you don't like. If, if I teach you 30 things and you only like one of them, then I'm doing my job. And if you leave my class and you only like one technique that I've taught you, great. So yeah, you're thinking about them, but maybe physically you're only gonna be doing one or two, but you at least you wanna be drawing with purpose you don't want to be kind of walking in the dark with, with like blindfolds on. And to do all this stuff, you, you really have to kind of do it in, in its purest, rarest form. And you've got to think about all these things that I've spoken about so far in this tutorial. First one being basic form. I don't like this bicep thing. Let me just fix this. Okay, striations of the muscle. You can actually shade with those striations of the muscle. Okay, now let's just press down harder. Um, another thing that we spoke about is just when you're doing the, the by the deltoid area, don't do like this cheesy Superman, you know, Spider-Man generic round deltoid muscle. Think about all the ins and the outs of it and it comes down maybe comes back in, we've got a convex line that fades off. Make this edge as complicated as you can. Uh, the more complicated you make it, the more realistic uh, your drawings are gonna be. Let me just kind of roll up into this. I don't think we're on the video camera. There's all other goodies that are happening with this, with this tutorial, but I just wanted to share with you this stuff. We're about at, at 13 minutes, which is appropriate for podcast number 13. So, so basically, I just wanted to uh, do this quick tutorial for you today to remind you of some of this stuff and to also let you know that I just bought the domains for uh, my new site which is going to be all about painting. Okay, I painted for almost 22 years, 18 years of them working as a professional illustrator and I don't really share my knowledge of painting but when you do something for 18 years you kind of get pretty good at it. Um, so I just bought the domain names for my new paint insight, which will be live this summer. I'm not going to say when because, uh, you know, things happen in life um, that derail you sometimes. But this summer it will be live. But the caveat is, why am I saying this? Because every current member of drawingtutorialsonline.com is going to get a free six-month subscription to the site. Uh, the new Pain Insight, and uh, and every current member uh, is not only going to get the free subscription um, for six months to the new Pain Insight while I'm adding new content to, to the Pain Insight, but after that six months, they're going to get such a, a low, ridiculous rate, it's not even funny. Um, and, you know, I just wanted to share that with you because some people, you know, they learn how to draw and then they want to go on to the next best thing. The next best thing is painting. And so that's what I'm going to start to share my knowledge of painting with you guys. So um, 
If you want more information, shoot me an email and you can get my email just by going to drawingtutorialsonline.com, clicking on contact and sending me an, an email and asking me about uh, what is going to be on that painting site because I don't want to talk and not draw because that's kind of boring. All right. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Draw in your own style. Don't necessarily love everything that your teachers teach you, including me. Be really choosy and only choose the things that are going to help you as an individual artist. And don't feel that if you don't listen to everything that that teacher teaches you, that you are uh, doing something bad. I've had some great, great teachers in, in my history. And when I'll close with this, and when I learned from them and I didn't use their technique, I felt guilty. I'm like, oh God, you know, I'm not doing their technique. What is wrong with me? I should be following everything that they say to the T. But that is wrong. You, you don't want to do that because if you do that, then you become a clone of that teacher. And you, and you want to be really weary of teachers who get aggravated with you if you don't do everything that they say. You know, you pick and choose. Be an individual artist and put your own spin on what I teach and what other teachers teach. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.